previously on Lost. Jack, how are we supposed to figure out what the length of this side is when we can't use the Pythagorean Theorem? John Locke, seriously, we have to use something else besides the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, it doesn't matter how big our right triangles are, we're going to have to use something different, and that thing is trigonometry. But what about the um, evil monster Theta? What, what is Theta? John, seriously, I'm a doctor. Theta is just a Greek letter to represent unknown angles. But will the will Sokotoa help us solve the mystery of why we're on this island? Well, Sokotoa will help us memorize our trig ratios, and that sine, cosine, and tangent represent opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over adjacent. Now, to see what's going on the island with video two. So, if we want to figure out some missing angles with trig, we can do that, okay? So the last video, the last episode of trigonometric ratio lost, uh, we were using angles to figure out side lengths whenever we couldn't use the Pythagorean theorem. Now we're going to be able to kind of reverse, uh, aka look at the inverse of our sine, cosine, and tangent if we want to know angles. Now, let's say I've got this little setup here, and I've got a uh, isosceles triangle, a right isosceles triangle. Uh, therefore, we should know how big angle A is, if you really think about it, because this follows one of our uh, patterns that we have talked about before. But let's just say, uh, using our angle A as our theta, if you will, we could have called this theta, we know the opposite side over here is 3, and we know the adjacent side is also 3. So if we knew opposite and adjacent, which ratio was that sine, cosine, or tangent dealt with those two types of sides? And that would be tangent. Okay. So we know, we know, without really any extra work in here, that the opposite and the adjacent are 3 and 3. Now, could we figure out what the hypotenuse is of this? And yeah, we could. It follows that particular pattern we discussed before. So we could figure out very easily, even with the Pythagorean theorem, that the hypotenuse is 3 root 2. So technically, we could use any of the ratios, right? But we know the sides here. We need to know the missing angle. Well, it doesn't matter which one of these three trig ratios we work with. We're going to get the same answer of 45 degrees. So let's discuss how we could use each one of these to lead us to the same answer of 45 degrees. Now, before we get into the math of this, let me just kind of explain, uh, you know, if we had problems like x squared equaled 50 and we wanted to solve for x, well, we needed to figure out a way to get rid of the square. So we would always say, you know, like, what's the opposite of squaring? Because that would allow us to get rid of the square. Well, technically, mathematically, when we say, you know, what's the opposite of this, what would undo this process, that's called an inverse process. So what's the inverse of squaring? Well, square rooting is the inverse. That's what undoes that mathematical process. So what we now need to discuss is what are the inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent? Because if you look at what we currently have over here, we have sine of A, and we want to get the A all by itself. So somehow we need to get rid of sine. Now, first glance, you might look at that and go, oh, well, we just need to divide both sides by sine. But if you type sine in your calculator, it's going to want a number, right? And what are you going to put in its place? We don't know. So this is hopefully going to be one of the easier inverses to remember. Uh, if you look at your calculator and look at the sine, cosine, tangent buttons, look right above them, not the buttons above them, but look what's written right above those buttons. And so if you see the sine button, right above it, it should say sine, and it kind of looks like to the negative 1 power. But that's not really to the negative 1 power. What this is, is inverse sine. So if we ever want to get rid of sine to get just our angle value, or just to get the, well, we want to get the angle value here because that's what we want to know, we're going to have to use inverse sine. And so we're going to have to use the second button with our sine, cosine, and tangent. So the inverse of sine is inverse sine. The inverse of cosine is inverse cosine. And the inverse of tangent is inverse tangent. 
Again, it's those things that look like to the negative 1 power, but they're not really to the negative 1 power. So here's how we're going to solve this. If I want to get rid of sine, mathematically, what I would have to do is take the inverse. Ooh, of course, I messed that up already. Let's try that again. I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So the inverse sine and sine knock each other out, and we have just our a left. And then this is what we're going to have to type into our calculator. The inverse sine and then our opposite over hypotenuse values are what we're going to have to type in. Now, if you first try typing this in, chances are you're going to make a mistake. There's going to, if you type in inverse sine 3 divided by 3 square root 2, and I get a domain error. And so I'm wondering, did, did I just lie to you? Did I just fool you into thinking this is what we're really doing? But here's the thing. you got to tell the calculator exactly what to do. And it's so with this bottom part, this 3 root 2, that you've got to be really careful with. So when I type this into the calculator, when I do second sign to get the inverse sign, it starts me out with a parenthesis, right? It starts me out with a parenthesis. Then I want to do 3 and then press the divided by button. You don't want to use the ABC key, okay? Because the ABC key only wants numbers. It doesn't want decimals or square roots. It'll give you another kind of error. So then this is where we're going to have to do a new parenthesis. So let me just get a different color here so we can distinguish our different parentheses. Start a new parenthesis because we need to put all of this, the 3 root 2, in its own parenthesis. So then we'll say 3 and then we can do the square root. And now that, when I use the square root button, it's going to give me another parenthesis. Oh my gosh. And then I can put in the 2. And then here's the thing. I want you to put an end parenthesis for the 2 and then an end parenthesis for the for the denominator, if you will, and then do another parenthesis. You should have three ending parentheses at the end of this, and this will close out the inverse sign. And so if we do that, dun, 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 one, two, three, then it gives me, boom, exactly 45. And that really means 45 degrees. Angle A is 45 degrees. Now, if I did the same thing with cosine, okay, how do I get rid of cosine? I got to do inverse cosine of both sides, so that knocks that out. So again, you can practice, do the inverse cosine, 3 divided by new parenthesis, 3 parenthesis root 2, end, end, end the parentheses. Oh, too many parentheses there. But boom, there we go. You should still get A is 45 degrees, because it's still the same angle A we're talking about. Uh, last but not least with tangent, since we just have numbers here, if you do inverse tangent of 3 over 3, again, it'll give you 45 degrees. So with the inverse tangent of 3 over 3, we don't have to do any special sets of parentheses. We just have the one main set here that really describe our inverse tangent ratio. But I'm just showing you this because if you know all three sides of a triangle, you have options. You can either use sine, cosine, or tangent. Sometimes you only have one option that you can really do there. Um, but if you have to have two sides to use inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, well, if you know two sides of a right triangle, well, technically you could use the Pythagorean theorem to get the third, and then you're open. You could use sine, cosine, or tangent. I wouldn't go through the extra Pythagorean theorem step necessarily to figure out the third side, because the main goal in the end is to figure out the angle. So let's practice one together. So here in example one, I've given you all three sides. This is a 3, 4, 5 uh, Pythagorean theorem, or Pythagorean triple right triangle. And I want to figure out how big angle X is. Well, I'm going to label my sides here. 3 is the opposite, 4 is the adjacent, and 5 is the hypotenuse. Since I know all three sides, it really doesn't matter which ratio that I use. Because I could use sine, there would be opposite and hypotenuse. I could use cosine, I know my adjacent and hypotenuse. And I could use tangent, because I know my opposite and adjacent. I have to know two sides, and I know all the sides here, really. So again, it does not matter which ratio you pick. Um, I'm just going to go with sine. So I would write this out, sine of my angle, which is x, is equal to the opposite, which is 3, over hypotenuse, which is 5. So if I want to solve for x, how do I get rid of sine? Well, I need to take the inverse sine of both sides. So inverse sine and sine knock each other out. I'll have my angle x, and then here's what I need to type in to my calculator. The inverse sine 
of 3 over 5. So inverse sine 3 divided by 5 in parentheses. And most of the time, you're going to get some really nasty decimals. Okay. For the most part, I think the book and uh, most of the tests and quizzes that I have here, I want you to round angles to the nearest whole number. Since I didn't specify here, I'm just going to go nearest whole number. So I get 36.86989765, which is going to round up to 37 degrees. So there's a 37, roughly a 37 degree angle. Now, real quick, could I very easily figure out how big this angle is without using trig? And I could, right? Because I know triangles have 180 degrees. I could get rid of the 90 that's down here. I could get rid of the 37 I just figured out. And what would be left over would be a 53 degree angle up here. So just keep that in mind for future references, like example two. Because in example two, I want you to figure out what are the two missing angles? What is angle A and what is angle C? So I'm going to leave this one for you guys to try. And again, since I gave you all three numbers here, it's really up in the air which trig ratio you want to use. You want to use sine? Use it. You want to use cosine? Use it. You want to use tangent? Use it. Now, we're going to do one more example together. Now, in this particular picture, you need to understand, first off, how many triangles there are in this problem. And at first glance, you might look at this and go, oh, well, there's two triangles, right? There's this guy right here, and there's this guy right over, whoop, different color, come on, there we go. There's this guy over here. But there's also a third triangle, right? There's the whole big thing, okay? So there's three triangles, and the thing you need to keep in mind about trig is that we're only going to use trig in right triangles. Now, how many of these triangles, how many of these three triangles are right triangles? Well, if you said the yellow one is obviously a right triangle, you would be correct. The red one, the great big one, is an overall big right triangle, but the green one over here, this is not a right triangle. So we could not use trig in this green triangle. All right. So whenever we get to this point, we need to figure out the length of y, which is in this triangle right here. We're going to have to keep in mind we can't use trig in that triangle. All right. So this is an example where there's going to be multi-steps. This isn't just going to be a one and done type problem. All right. So let's see here. Um, Let's start with the smaller right triangle, because if I look at this, I believe I can figure out what x is, right? I know an angle in this triangle. I know a 65 degree angle. I need to figure out a side, okay? So I'm going to be using regular, just regular or plain old sine, cosine, tangent, not inverse, because I only use inverse when I want to know angles. Uh, so the x over here, it's the opposite side of the 65 degree angle. And the 6, which is in this right triangle, is the adjacent side. So opposites and adjacents, that was tangent, right? So we'd say tangent of our angle, which we know, 65 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, x, over the adjacent side, 6. So to solve for x, we need to get rid of this divided by 6. So we'd multiply both sides by 6. And so in my calculator, 6 times regular tangent, remember not inverse tangent, 6 times tangent 65, and I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth, and I'd get 12.9 to the nearest tenth. I get 12.86704152, but 12.9, we'll say. So we know this length over here is 12.9, approximately. All right, so now to figure out why. Man, this is tough, because we said we can't do trig in this triangle. It's not a right triangle. This is where we might have to go and look at the overall big triangle. Okay, so now let's focus our attention on this guy. So we've got a big triangle. Whoa, got a little crazy there. Got a little crazy. It's okay. So if we're looking at the big triangle, well, I got a 90 degree angle in here. I've got a 42 degree angle, which means this 65 I kind of need to ignore because it's not one of the three main angles of the big right triangle, right? So now if I look at this, the x that's over here, remember this was 12.9, it is the opposite side of the 42 degree angle. And, well, which side is the adjacent? Is it just the y? No, it's this whole thing. It's the 6 with the y. So I would need to add these two pieces together. 
And this is where I see a lot of people make a mistake, and they want to say it's 6y. But that implies multiplication. And we went and multiply those two things together to make it one whole thing. So this is the adjacent side. It's the 6 plus y piece. All right. So now, again, we got still opposite and adjacent. We're going to keep using tangent. But our angle has shifted. We're not using the 65 anymore. We're going to use the 42. So now the opposite side is x, but we know x is now 12.9, approximately. And the adjacent side, we're going to have to write as 6 plus y. Now, to algebraically figure this thing out, well, y is in the denominator. So we said earlier in previous problems, let's multiply both sides by 6 plus y. And i got to put this 6 plus y in parentheses because it's the whole quantity 6 plus y. So that's going to knock that out. And then I have 6 plus y times tangent 42 equals the 12.9. Well, the next step I could do here is I could get rid of the tangent 42. Because remember, tangent 42 is just some decimal number. So let's divide it over. So now it's gone. And so I could type that in my calculator, but I'm not. Okay, just, just stay with me here. We still got 6 plus y equals 12.9 over tangent 42. Now, if I'm going to get the y all by itself, I need to subtract 6 over. So finally, I get y equals, equals 12.9 divided by tangent 42 minus 6. And this minus 6 needs to be separate from this fraction because it's not a part of it. I wouldn't put the minus 6 up here with the 12.9. So now if I want to type this in, I'm going to go 12.9 divided by tangent 42, end the parenthesis with the 42, and then say minus 6. So that I get that y is approximately, I'm going to go to the nearest tenth again, 8.3. Now, an alternative of figuring out y here is we could have come up with a new variable for the 6 plus y. We could have called 6 plus y, we could have called it, I don't know, what, w. And so then over here, instead of saying 6 plus y, get rid of all these over here, we could have just said 12.9 over w, and then multiplied both sides by w, and then, so that was a w. So we could have had, up to this point, we could have had w equals 12.9 divided by tangent 42. So 12.9 divided by tangent 42. So this comes out to be 14.3. So if the whole thing, the whole thing is 14.3, and we have 6 of it, we could at this point just say, oh, well, if I just subtract 6, then y, the leftover, must be 8.3. So there's kind of an alternative way that you can figure out y. Okay, You don't have to include the 6 and the y automatically and solving for that. So you will see some more problems like this, like, oh, I don't know, the next problem, that I want you to try out on your own. So it's very similar. There's three triangles in here. Just keep in mind, with this triangle right here, you specifically can't do trig with it because it's not a right triangle. So I'll leave this one for you guys, and we'll discuss this one and example two together in class the next day. And that's all for video two.